Hi, this is O'Connor and welcome to the future of sourcing from China and the region. This is a preview of a two day executive ed program that I'm going to be running in June. And I welcome all of you to join this program. I just want to give you a brief run through of what we're going to cover over those two days. Those two days are spread out over two weeks, two mornings one week and two mornings in the following week, or they actually could be two afternoons in each of those weeks. So you've got four half days over two weeks. So when I say day one, that's week one, day two is week two. Okay, let's get into what I'm going to cover over those two days. My name is Neil O'Connor. I have spent over a decade working with supply chains in the region, spent over 20 years living in Hong Kong, going across the border to factories in China, interviewing over a thousand suppliers back in 2010 to 2013, and actually visiting over 40 factories and videoing end-to-end -end operations over the last five years across the border in Shenzhen. And in between, speaking to hundreds and hundreds of buyers in global support sources trade shows, as well as thousands of suppliers in global sources exhibitions in China. And I've also helped dozens of startups, IoT startups, in terms of connecting them with suppliers in China, solving their problems in getting their hardware element of their product uh, put together. So there you have it. That's where I have come from in my experience. And I'll bring that to you in a two day jam packed session. Let's see what we're going to cover. There I am on the global sources stage. There are many areas that we cover in those two days. And in some ways, they cover these areas of the future of sourcing from China and the region. On day one, we're going to be focusing on starting macro, the trade war, COVID-19 and supply chain megatrends. And what did that mean for sourcing shifts in the region and the challenges for managing risk in the region and for managing at a distance in the region? Then we're going to go and look at factory operations, get you into the details so you become a better negotiator. And also that you become a better person for working with third party auditors because you cannot go and travel and visit the factory in most developing countries today. On day two, we're going to look at more detail of the scams and the things you need to do to avoid scams. Also, how you can tell a good from a bad supplier, as well as how do you protect your IP, learning the lessons from case studies in IoT. We're going to also look at multinationals, how they're using technology such as blockchain, virtual QC factory management to revolutionize the management of supply chain. And that will basically day one and day two, jam packed and lots of things for everyone to take away. Put it another way, we're going to actually sourcing shift. We've got lots of information in terms of the movement of factories out of China. We've got three circle control framework. The big thing I'm going to bring to the table is this factory comparison way of bringing the real world to your computer screen that is showing you two factories and then asking you to think about which one you would source from or if there's any problems that you would fix. Also, we're going to have a factory video case study exercise as well as request for quotation exercise. So lots of jam-packed, interesting exercises for participants to do during these two days. In week one, we're going to be look at starting off, as I said, starting off, kicking off with COVID-19 and the future sourcing trends. As we know, in 2020, there are lots of problems and gyrations between supply and demand for PPE. That's even happening in 2021. In 2020, it was face masks. In 2021, now it's the oxygen canisters that help regulate or create the oxygen that's needed for COVID patients. And so we're going to talk about the challenges of actually sourcing these products, both in 2020 and actually currently today. We're going to just show you the actual framework for sourcing shift in the region as a result of COVID, as a result of the trade war, and why some multinationals are actually choosing to stay in China and the reasons why in terms of the long term focusing on developing a really compliant and sustainable supply chain. 
Also, we're going to look at those factories that have moved out of China and why they've moved to different countries and actually highlighting the different industries that are exposed when they go to a particular country. Ah, and then, you know, there's a map of moving out of China, but moving to various areas in the world, including Vietnam, Indonesia, Mexico, US, Malaysia, and so forth. We're actually going to characterize, is there a difference between those that moved to North Vietnam and South Vietnam? So this is all part of the sourcing shift in the early part of day one. So this gets you warmed up for what is going on out there regionally in terms of sourcing shifts in the region. Then I'll introduce you to the three circle control framework and that is really helping you help the participants to understand where are you strong in and which circle are you weak in and need more help in, in terms of advice or in terms of who you need to outsource that help to. Third party inspectors, lawyers, negotiators and so forth. Ah, and then we actually take you through that third three circle control framework to help you to become a better negotiator. And then we actually set the scenes for negotiation by bringing the three circle control framework into the factory. And this is where we actually show in day one, two factories and comparisons, many different products. Here we've got headphones, cheap headphone at the top, expensive headphone at the bottom. And then I actually take you into those exact factories. So you actually see the difference between those two headphone products. Not to say that you buy one or the other, but just to understand that you the strategy you need to be aware of when you're sourcing an expensive product versus a cheap product. Ah, and the strategies you need to be aware of in terms of the QC associated with the quality of the factory. Ah, and then I'll take, I'll show you more factories to understand the supplier's business model. Because if you can better understand the supplier's business model, you're in a better position to negotiate with the suppliers. Wow. Wow, it's, Neil, have we got to day two yet? No, 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 this is still day one. And I want to take you through many factory comparisons. So you really get to feel the real world in your studio, in your on your computer, because it will be online for the first instance of this two-day workshop. Using a factory visit to help in negotiation. Now, you can't visit the factory, but I can show you what you need to look for when you visit the factory. And you're probably thinking, why do you think, why is that important? Well, that helps you to actually talk to third party inspectors or the proxy that is already in that country and visiting your factory on your behalf. And so if you know what they should be looking for, then you're not going to be hoodwinked or swindled by a third party proxy that is working on your behalf. And you know you're getting value for money because you know they're looking out for specific areas that you know need to be looked out for. I'll also show you a factory, this example video, where we actually go into the factory and give them advice of how to improve different operations. Why would you do that? You're just buying a product from that factory. No, if you can help the factory, then you're in a better position to develop the relationship and you have a better negotiating power. Ah, wow. It's all big thing on day one about negotiation. How can you improve your ability to negotiate, especially from a distance. So why would you do that? So you can better communicate with the third party inspector. And that is in day one, we talk about developing a relationship with the third party inspector. It starts with you understand the factory. And now I show you what a third party inspector is going to get for you. And that is audits of factories to begin with for you to choose between whether you go into one area of China where the audits are very high quality or you go to another area of China, the audits are low quality. This could be in other countries as well. We're not just picking on China here, but I just want to show you that third parties, when they go on your behalf, they will actually create a report to tell you whether you have your product being produced by that factory has met certain AQL standards and therefore we're going to, if you understand that, then you're better able to understand the audit report and then you're in a better position to actually discuss with the auditor. I'll show you a video of actual what the lab testing does so you can actually communicate with the lab tester and have a better relationship with the lab tester as well. Ah, and then 
finally on day one we're actually going to go through a real factory audit and you actually get to choose do we order purchase from factory a or factory b wow real world stuff real factory videos brought to your computer brought into your study room for this two-day executive workshop so at the end of that day, everyone will be asked to do a request for quotation, and that's an assignment to bring back in the following week so we actually work even more. And what are we going to do then? Well, in week two, we're going to look at scams in IoT startup sourcing. Why would we look at that? Because we need to prepare you for the worst case scenario and how to avoid the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is you will get scammed. The worst case scenario is that your IP gets stolen. It gets copied. Your product gets delivered to your market by a competitor six months before you get your own product to that market. That happens. How do you avoid that? And that's what we're going to be focusing on in the first half of day two. How do we do that? By actually showing you real live data from the supplier blacklist. We have over 3,000 complaints and we actually deliver information about those complaints to you, whether particular product segments are more likely to be scammed than others. And also in terms of at what, what stage of your experience are you like to be scammed versus others. Many other comparisons for discussion at the first hand of day two. Related to scams, we're gonna look at IoT startup sourcing. Why would we do that? Not all participants are contemplating making an IoT. I understand that. So why would I talk about that? Is this because IoTs out of all of the buyers are more likely to be very sensitive to their IP that they need to get protected. They're not a big multinational where they have lots tons of lawyers to actually do all the legal contracts and actually fight suppliers in court if they do something wrong. IoTs, small startups, even small buyers, Amazon buyers, you don't have that luxury. So you need to protect your IP from the ghetto. And we focus on more physical approaches to protecting IP. And I give you six case study examples. So I take run through in day two, the first half, and show you how you can protect your IP. Different strategies, that's very, very important. And we relate that back to the three circle control framework, having discovered where you are strong on and where you are weak on in day one. Ah, and then the final part of day two, we're gonna bring in multinational best practice sourcing. What do, why do we wanna learn about that? Because multinationals tell us a lot more about how COVID has affected them, trade war, sourcing shift, but COVID-19, lack of visibility, but multinationals also have greater challenges of building sustainable supply chains because they have ginormous volumes. And also they are much more visible in terms of whether they are complying with the regulations in EU, in the USA and other developed countries in the world. So you've got compliance, you've got visibility, you've got sustainability issues. How do multinationals manage them? And this is really good for those in my session that are in procurement teams. And then we talk about this transparency. It is a big challenge today because you can't go and visit the factory in de the developed world. Ah, you need you rely on proxies. What else are multinationals doing? I talk about different strategies that they do to manage costs down because there's so much pressure on costs these days because when you ship to some country, especially like the US, then they add on a 10, 15, 20, 25% tariff on that product. And so, you know, how do you pass that on to your suppliers? So then you can actually still survive as a trader, survive as a retailer in this globalized world. Ah, wow. I'll show you a real example of how multinationals do it, how they actually re-engineer products from suppliers so they can get that information to enhance their negotiation power, their negotiation strategy. Ah, and then finally, we're going to look at how technology is starting to find its way into how supply chains are managed with specific examples of blockchain, especially in the logistics area. And, show, and I'll show some brief case studies about how they, blockchain is being used. And this is something that it's just a small component, but just to give 
a greater awareness of that that it that is getting a greater foothold every year as we go into the 2020s ah and so there's our course structure there's all the different things we're going to play with we're looking at sourcing shift three circle control framework lots and lots of factory comparisons we've got factory video case study exercises we've got the request for quotation exercise we've got data on scams we've got data on iot's we've got data on how multinationals are executing best practice in terms of visibility sustainability and compliance jam-packed two days it's a two-day course that you don't want to miss and it's specially designed for senior executives responsible for global, international, pan-Asia sourcing with content-rich collaborative program. Two-day workshop offers managers, engineers, procurement teams, and researchers interested in setting up and managing suppliers to support startups, internet things, projects, Amazon platform sales, and multinational operations. So it's very broad, lots of actual real life examples rather than textbook theoretical examples to be shown. I'm Neil O'Connor, 10 years in this region, integrating with supply chains in terms of interviewing suppliers, visiting factories, giving them advice for continuous improvement, working with buyers in solving sourcing problems, working with a lot of 3PLs in the region, come into my two-day unit and we're going to learn a lot and have lots of interactions and have lots of fun at the same time. This is O'Connor and welcome to the two-day executive seminar on the future of sourcing from China and the region. Bye for now.